Okay, great. Hello, folks out there in drone flight land. Does that sound right? No, I don't know. Anyway, this is Drone Therapy, The Bucket List Boys, Season 2, Episode 8. Um, it's called Killer Frost Giveaway for two reasons. Because of those ridiculously cold temperatures. And if you don't know how cold it is, go to Ron Brown's channel and check out the video. And because Coast to Coast Drones is two years old now. I think it's uh, January 25th was the first time I uploaded a video. So we're going to give away a drone. It's going to be a small drone. But first, I think it's time for my co-host to say hello. Take it away, Ron. Hello, this is Ron from the frozen uh, northeast of the United States here in southern New Jersey, where it was uh, in the single digits the other day and in the negatives with the wind chill thrown in. But uh, I have thawed out enough to make my uh, weekly appearance here on the great drone therapy show, The Bucket List Boys. And tonight I'm going to go highlight a few things we're going to talk about later. Um, I'm going to give us some updates on the Hubson Zeno drone tonight. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, drone scare at the Newark Airport uh, last night. Newark Airport is one of the biggest airports in, in the eastern U.S. And um, a couple other things. I want to talk about the uh, the Phoebe drone and, um, you know, and, and a couple other little things. But I'm going to throw it to my uh, cohort here from sunny Florida, Bill H. Take it away. Thanks, Ron. Yeah, I won't tell you that it was 79 degrees and partly sunny today. So good, uh, good, Don. I won't, I won't say that. Uh, got 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 some great things to talk about. Um, we got the um, news about the more news about the DJI Smart Controller. Um, also wanted to talk about an anniversary today, and it's not of the channel; it's of something else. And also want to talk uh, a little bit about the uh, DJI fraud um, investigation that's going on internally over there in China. There's a lot, there's a lot of dealings going on with that. So um, got lots of stuff to, to cover tonight. So we'll hand it back to Mr. Bill. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Bill, the drone reviewer. So an explanation of the contest. I'm not a rich man, so it's probably going to be a small drone, something cool off of Vipon. You know me. <clears throat> I love the small drones, and they all fly real good, and they're fun. So anyway, with that being said, it's going to be a two-part contest. Sometime tonight, I'm going to give you all a code word, and you're going to have to remember the code word in, able to, in order to come back next week and compete for the drone. But I got I to gotta be really clear, like I said a minute ago, it's not going to be a big drone. It's not going to be an expensive drone. But it's going to have a shipping clause because we're giving away a drone. We're not giving away the shipping. Sorry. I like sleeping with my wife in the bed next to her, and I hate the couch. So with that being said, sometime tonight, I'm going to give out the code words. And next week when we have drone therapy, yes, we're going weekly now. Weekly, weekly, weekly. We're going to have a contest called Drone News Trivia. And we're going to ask anywhere from three to five questions, depending upon, you know, what kind of participation we got. But you have to tell us what the code words are in order to get into the contest. And you'll have about, say, five minutes to tell us the code word. And after those five minutes, we will close all entries. And only the people who have given us the code words will be allowed to compete for the drone. The person with the most points at the end gets the drone. If you are overseas, we will ask you to help out with the shipping because as I said, I can't, I can't do that. I just, I'm not that wealthy. Maybe somewhere down the road, you know, if YouTube decides to be nice to us <laughs> and you have got you guys too, of course, then yes, but I'll ship anywhere in the continental U S um, and I'll check and see what shipping is to like Alaska and why hopefully it won't be that bad. And I can, I'll do that. Otherwise uh, we'll, I'll work out something and we'll try to figure out, maybe a 50 50 thing or i'll talk to the other guys and we'll maybe something but you're gonna have to help with the shipping in because i don't know what the rates are overseas so i in my area that i want to cover tonight as you heard bill was talking earlier about the smart controller that's one of my little pet peeves my rant is about bill before before you start your rant can i welcome some people into the yeah, chat room you, you can go um, for, 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 for it we got Floyd Motes in the tra chat room right now. We got Jim Wallace. We got Thomas O'Sullivan. We got 
Ian Drones Gaming in here. Um, Rick Rick Harbor's in here. J John Cuppy's in there. Uh, Sinister uh, Sinister Three R. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. I think, I think you just I've got, got every three is the E. I think I've got everybody uh, covered in there. Uh, yeah. Welcome everybody. Thanks for uh, coming in. And now we're going to let. Um, the great Bill Thomas going a little bit of a rant tonight. He's got a good one for you. So just settle in. Well, okay. If anybody has kept up with me, and if not, you can look on Twitter. I think it's Twitter, The Dead Thomas. I think it, that's what it is, The Dead Thomas. Yeah. <clears throat> I've been having like a personal duel between myself and DJI over this DJI Select program. And how you can only use it on accessories, right? But yet on their on their actual web page, if you go to the DJI website, you hover over the consumer tab, it brings down all the consumer drones. To the far left is the Mavic 2 Pro. Okay, to the far right is a tab that says accessories. The first thing underneath accessories and the picture is the brand new smart controller. Okay, so I, I took I took a picture of one of my coupons that I got when I bought DJI Select when I got my Mavic 2, long before the smart controller was ever known to exist for sure to the consumer. We were we had a good idea, but we didn't know for sure. Okay, it was not put into their excluded items at that time. So our coupons, by virtue of the fact that they were there before it was even listed, and it's shown on their website as an accessory. We should be able to use that 20% coupon to purchase the consumer accessory that they sold us on when they sold us on that $49 fantastic select program. We should be able to use those accessory coupons on cons consumer accessories, just like it said when they sold us that to begin with. Otherwise, like I've been raising cane with DJI on Twitter, I'm telling you DJI Select means DJI Selects for you. You don't <laughs> get any selection at all. Like I was even talking about what are they going to expect us to do? We're going to have to buy one of the little landing pads. Oh, I get 20% off your $16 landing pad. Thanks for the buck 50 off. Woohoo! You know, I'm like, well, so the whole point is, is what's the deal? If it's supposed to be select and the, and the consumers and, and the customers are, are the important part and we're paying because we're supposed to get priority shipping. Okay. Priority shipping. Uh, then why didn't I get my pocket Osmo pockets accessories before anybody else did? Pretty much everybody was getting theirs the same day I ordered mine and they got it at the same time. I thought we got priority shipping on everything and we were at the front of the line. We were the ones that got notices about new products before anybody else. And then that's what they sold us on. And now they're telling us, you know, you've got the, the, the list of products that are excluded is like 20 and the stuff you can use it on is about six. And with that being said, <laughs> I'm going to cool off for a minute. And I'm going to over to my cohort and comrade, Mr. Bill H. Bill, the drone reviewer. Hey, thank you, Mr. Mr. Bill. Um, you know, one of the things that really kind of surprised everybody and took us by shock was um, that the smart controller was available. I, I had done a video on that over the weekend. I received some information from one of my subscribers that the FCC grant ID was approved on Friday the 18th, and I said it's going to come in short order, and sure enough, it did. Within 24 hours, it was sold out. But today, this morning, it was available again. So if you want to go ahead and order that, you're, you're absolutely free to do it. Unfortunately, as Bill said, uh, DJI Select, it means DJI selects the coupon, uh, the accessory that it's good on. So, uh, But yeah, it is available right now. Uh, you know, and what I find very interesting was on my videos, almost everybody, I mean, it was a universal thing regarding the price of this $650, $649. And everybody's saying no, 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 and no. Um, they said 400, maybe 300, definitely, but 650, no. But what I find real interesting was that it got sold out so fast. I don't know if they just, I don't know if, you know, what, I, what I'm thinking is DJI is very smart 
and they want to create a demand here. So that's what they did by having initially a very short supply, then it got sold out, and then a day later they're available again. So I, I think you know there's there's some there's some um, games. I don't want to call them games necessarily, but maybe there's there's some, there's some thinking going on as far as that's concerned. And I think and also I think a lot of this ties into the fact too that DJI now has. You've probably heard it's it's been all over the place. I just saw I saw it yesterday in Reuters. Everybody's carrying it. The DJI has it's an, an internal fraud investigation going on, and they lost upwards of 150 million dollars. I mean, uh, I believe the article in Reuters said they fired up to 42 people um, that were involved with this, and it involved overpricing accessories by 20 percent and parts. So uh, you know, and you know, a lot of people are saying, "Well, DJI should give us a discount." Well. I say no. I say what's going to happen is DJI is going to do the exact opposite. They're, they're going to they're going to go ahead and probably you know, keep those prices right where they're at. Um, you know, we're not going to see these kind of discounts that we really want to see, uh, and they're going to be trying to make up for this loss. Is is what I'm thinking as as far as that's concerned. And one other thing that I I, I kind of wanted to talk about today: Happy anniversary. DJI Mavic Air. The Mavic Air turned one year old today. And I've got a video coming out on that later tonight. So guys, go ahead and make sure you watch that. But it's happy anniversary to the Mavic Air. One year old today. We found out what the adventure unfolds was. And now I kick this back to my frozen co-host <laughs> from New Jersey, Ron Brown. Thank you, Bill. Uh, before I get into my content, I want to follow up on a couple of uh, your stories here, like the the D, the the uh, scandal with the uh, employees with the fraud. Um, I mean, I read probably a different article from you. The understanding I got, and I, I may have this wrong, is that the employees were, you know, buying parts from a parts company. Like say they were buying motors, so they would buy a million dollars worth of motors, but they would say they cost two million dollars. And they and they pocketed the other million dollars that they you know they they overinflated and they probably split them with the, with somebody at the parts company or whatever is that is that correct do you think or I think so Ron yeah I think you're right so in, in that case the drones prices would have been artificially higher because the marketing people or the pricing people you know were basing it on the costs of the drone and the drone did cost as much as they thought it did because of the inflated parts and the people defrauding the company of said the the prices of parts versus what they were paying them so that'll be interesting i i read a figure of it was a billion dollars and that the, it was so big that the chinese government has really got their hands into it now it's just not an internal investigation they're being heavily investigated by the chinese government they've never seen fraud in this level before in, in china so i mean it's a big story so literally when i say heads will roll heads will probably really roll Roll, right. And and back to the smart control for a second. I, I kind of was thinking the same thing as you that that one day sell out or whatever was kind of like uh, Apple in the old days where the all the new iPhones would artificially be gone after the first hour the stores opened up and everything that kind of created an interest for them that maybe wasn't wasn't entirely there. But um, you know, um, and uh, another follow up question. Who, who is the DJ? I mean, I know it's a great controller. I mean, I would love to have, I don't have OcuSync 2 drone yet, but if I did, I'd love to have one. But, but, but who, who's this controller really for? Just, just, I mean, I know people, anybody has the money wants it, but is it really aimed at the, at the pro market more here's, than the consumer market? Here's what I think, Ron, and, and this is just my opinion from having spent some time with the enterprise dual. I think it's aimed at the enterprise and enterprise dual market because if you if you're a first responder um you watch the video for the smart control the promo video um i think it's like what 30 seconds to get that up and running compared to i don't know a minute 30 to get you know the normal controller and your iphone up and running so i think speed is of the essence with that and definitely that's a huge selling point i mean it, it really is uh, that, that that's huge being able to get it up get it running and get it going so i think it's really kind of aimed at them Obviously, you know, they made it so it's compatible with with the regular two series. And I also heard from DJI themselves that it will be compatible. Eventually, they'll do a software update for the Phantom 4 Pro V2.0 because of OcuSync 2.0. Right. 
All right, good, good, good to know. And one other qu uh, quick uh, question for my uh, ask, ask, ask Bill episode of the show here. Um, with, with the dual flare, which I, you've been doing an outstanding job on your videos. Um, I'm really impressed with them. I mean, I've learned so much from watching your videos. Uh, shame they took it back from you so soon, but you've done a great job with it. But one question I had, I know it has the two cameras, and the one is the heat sensing camera, the infrared camera, whatever the proper term is. But the other camera, is that the same camera that's in the um, the the Mavic Pro 2 Pro, or is that the same camera that's in the Mavic 2 Zoom? Or no, a different camera? that would probably be the – that's a great question, Ron. Um, actually, I got a video that, that's, that's in the works regarding that. I'm going to be doing a comparison video between the camera from the um, Enterprise um, Dual – with the Mavic 2 Pro, but I think, and just this is just off the off the top of my head, the quality is, if I would call it equivalent to the Mavic Pro's camera. I mean, the Mavic Pro's camera is nothing to sneeze at, okay. but right. it's definitely not, you know, even even up to the Zoom kind of kind of quality in terms of, um, you know, in, in terms of what you see from it. Well, that makes sense because obviously with this enterprise drone, they're not looking to get cinematic. Uh, uh, drone videos that makes sense that the camera and the mavic to Ma the yeah. mavic pro is perfectly yeah. fine for those brief reasons. pause brief pause right and i think what brief pause, uh, brief pause. Uh, what, what, let's pause for a second we got a interlude here yes uh -oh. i need to do this we have 16 people in the room you people will know the code words for next week's game drone news trivia and the code oh. words are dji select I heard that. DJ I heard that. Select. I heard it. I heard that. All right. Now, please do not post it in the chat. Do not tell anyone. Do not put timestamps as to when I gave out the code words. And next week when you come in, just put, type the code words into chat. We'll give it for leave it for about five minutes. And then we'll cut it off the entries. And those people that got in in the five minutes will... Do, do some kind of goofy we'll have like i said three or five questions on goofy drone news or something and whoever gets the most points wins the drone and i'll ship it to you so with that being said i'll let it go back to mr zeno ron brown <laughs> okay um my the episode of ask, ask bill the drone reviewer is, is over but thanks for those great answers bill i i yeah. really learned a lot from uh you know what what you uh that you answer all the questions and things that that I did that I didn't know or understand. So I really appreciate that. But on to uh, Xeno News for the week. Um, since I last talked to you, I've downloaded the um, the camera update for the Xeno uh, firmware update three point three available on the Hubson website. Just scroll all the way to the bottom of the main page, and you'll you'll easily find it. Uh, you have to put on a like a, a memory card and put in a drone, and it only takes a, a minute or two. But um, it has when I say it has fixed the soft focus issue. I mean, it's still somewhat softness in there, but it has taken what was unusable footage before and, you know, got it up, you know, got the, you know, the, the, the quality of the footage up to where it's usable to make a video now. Um, in fact, in the, in the chat room at the very beginning, I post a link to my most recent Hops and Zeno video where I made a cinematic, um, flight over a, a snow-filled beach. And, you know, again, for a $369 drone, the, the footage looks acceptable in my mind. Uh, you know, that's you weigh in with, uh, with your thoughts over it. But um, uh, I'll move on to uh, another bit of news from Hupson. They have made a carrying bag for the Xeno, and it's already on the Hupson website. It says sold out. I mean, it, it actually hasn't been sold yet, but it's there and it's coming soon. I don't know the date, but um, it is there, so you can – put in your cart and everything and um i have another good story coming up uh about drones being sighted at the newark airport new jersey new jersey but i'll be back with that later and i'll throw it back to bill thomas here he's got some exciting news for you do i okay cool uh no i already had my rant and the exciting news is that i can see arts in the chat and i see Jim. Hello, art i like the, the cool little the little quirky trip that blue eye visuals did with the, the, the cute timestamp thing. Uh, and Rick, Rick's here. And so I just was wanting to say hello to everybody that had dropped in. And again, like I said, next week we will have the drone news trivia for the, like I said, um, it's probably something I find on, on 
you know, like in the $35, $40 range. So, you know, something nice to play around with, something to play with the grandkids with. That's what I've been getting into here lately because I have two grandsons that I like to play with drones and stuff. And my grandson even bought me this drone, the Predator for Christmas. So, and I like it's my one of my favorite indoor flyers. And with that, um, why don't we take some questions and some input? And do you have anything else you want to go like over, Ron, Bill? Anything? Well, what, what, what's jump into it? This is making a three way conversation here. Maybe the chat room could jump in on this. Um, there was a, an incident that happened just last night. It was all over the the, the news channels, whether you listen to CNN or or whatever. Um, at the Newark Airport in North North Jersey, which is just outside of New York City, so it's one of the biggest airports on the busiest airports on the eastern coast um now it does in the article D, dj drone or whatever post it doesn't mention pilots but on the telecast last night they said pilots spotted dr two drones flying at a height of 3500 feet above the airport and after this all um you know uh uh flights were canceled nobody could land for hours they rerouted people they had them in the air again it was all over the news um and as of this point there there hasn't been any real evidence these drones over there kind of like the gatwick thing and thing no nobody's outside of these two pilots seen it they've they've never found anything they don't have any video or any physical evidence and uh dji spokesman adam Lindsberg said not to uh point to drones too quick quickly as as the likely culprits and there was even a reference that drones are the new flying saucers um Bill H., did you hear about this story, and what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I sure did. I mean, as soon as I heard the altitude <laughs> and the speed that the planes were going, I'm like, there. I'm, I'm sorry, there is just absolutely, positively no way that those were drones. And, you know, number one, 3,500 feet. I mean, that's really stretching it for, for a lot. I mean, a lot of those drones, I know, um, for instance, like the Mavic 2, I believe, has a ultimate ceiling is 16,000 feet because DJI did, did pressure tests with them. If you look in the specs, but come on, I mean, you, you can't see, you can't do anything, especially at night and at that altitude. That, that's not, that's not going to fly. I actually now, heard. Now, now, Bill, let me, let me stop you just for sure. a second. They, they did say that, you know, um, that that 3,500 feet is approximately a mile up. And um, we'll say uh, 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 the, the Mavic 2 Pro can, fly five or six miles away with OcuSync, but that's not up. That's, that's, that's out. Right. Uh, okay. Right. That's, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I just wanted to get that in for you got too far. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things that I heard and it actually, I mean, this was kind of, kind of funny, um, not really haha -ha funny, but um, I don't know if you heard um, somebody said that there was an impact on the lunar surface um, during the, uh, during the um, full moon, that during the moon event. And somebody said, yeah, those were the two dr drones that were spotted over in Newark last night. I was, <laughs> yeah, okay. But I, I did see that tweet from Adam Lindsberg from, from DJI. And it's actually, I did actually, I met him at the at the um, Mavic 2 event um, back really? in August. I had an opportunity. And Rick Smith knows him real well. He's a very nice guy, very interesting, very talkative, um, very friendly, very, very, very nice, very informative. But yeah, he yeah, he he was spot on with that. You know, it's like everybody wants to dr jump. You know, the drones are the new UFOs. Um, you know, up up, gotta be a drone, gotta be a drone. You know, and it's people are just so quick to point to a drone, and they have no clue. They have absolutely no clue. And let me tell you, I don't really. The only time I've ever flown at night was when I flown the dual out in my backyard with the lights on. And let me tell you guys, flying at night is very a very risky proposition um you know even with the lights on and you know the light came on on the bottom of the mavic 2 because it has that 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 floodlight on there and even with all that and i had the the lights on and back it was still uh, just i just don't like flying at night i think you know that that's just um you know it, it's hard and it's hard to see and especially you know if, if you're going up you know, how in the world are you going to get down? And you have to also realize too, that if you run out of battery and it's going to try to find home, it's never going to find home because home is based on that proximity sensor that's underneath, underneath the Mavic 2 or, you know, any of the, any of the DJI drones and it's never going to find, it's never going to match that picture up. You know, it'll be impossible. It'll right. be wherever. 
So, so bottom line is you kind of doubt the story just from the standpoint of being physically possible to do some of this stuff, right? Yeah. Well, and you you know the Gatwick story in, in England, they never ever found any real evidence that there was ever a drone any place. Yes, and they had actually had some people under custody for that too, for right. I think twenty four hours and released. But yeah, they they sh short, shortly because again there was no the only thing that that the guy was guilty of, of of was owning the drone and flying it, you know, uh, but yeah. not not at the airport or whatever. Um, and yeah, I, I agree with you in the night flying. I mean, my my goal with flying my DJI products is, is photography. And obviously I'm not getting any photography done at night. I mean, I've flown it in that, you know, what they call it, that the first hour after official dusk Twilight. or whatever, when you yeah. can still see a little bit of whatever. I did that one time and got some decent video. I mean, it was noisy, but you know, it was still pretty good. But I mean, outside of that, I've never taken up past dusk. You know, I've, it, once, once the sun sets, I'm, you know, I'm landed because photography's over then. And, you know, the, it, technically, and um, my friend Brian Fannery from Smoky Mountain Aerial said, you know, when you fly at night, you have to have a strobe light on. I mean, it, it has, illegally, you have, I mean, even right now before the FAA, this proposed ruling right. and everything, you have to have a strobe light on there and it has to be visible up to three miles. I mean, that's right. That That's in the part 107 uh, uh, test. Exactly. We talk about all the laying of the drone. So mm -hmm. I was going to, I was going to get Bill Thompson's opinion on this, but he seemed to disappear on us. Oh, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, oh, oh. he's getting uh -oh. ready for what a special set up here. Works? Bill Thomas, was that you flying at the Newark airport uh, last night? No, no, not me. Not me. You sure. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm in agreement with everybody else. I'm thinking it's all a bit of a BS because that high and that far out, man, I'm talking about, man, it would have had to have what 15 pound batteries on it. But why would a why, why would a pilot say that? I'm again. Uh, they said it last night on one of the newscasts about a pilot, but I didn't see that today in in drone DJ story. But why would a pilot say he saw a drone if he didn't? Like, what would what would he be trying to accomplish? I mean, he knew he was going to mess up the traffic at the airport. I mean, I I just don't know why a trade pilot would say something like that if it was, I you I know, know, I don't know. But the reason that I kind of interjected, as you can see on the screen. And I will go ahead and present this. Um, one of my dear friends who has come into Coast to Coast Drones and is helping me add a new kind of division to the group, along with G. Nemo Edwards and Joe and, and Brian have both hooked up with me. Brian Beardsley is the guy that has built this particular drone for me so that I can actually break into the the... FPV field and he just sent me this picture and said he put pink slippers on her and I swear I think I'm in love. I just wanted to <laughs> you know, I just wanted to share that with you folks and, and let y'all know and, and give a little more detail as we go. Uh, maybe you can get Ken Heron to come over and give you some lessons on flying that thing. He did so well in the video with Mel uh, last week. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't really pay attention to, to that. I hadn't uh, I don't know. I just, I've been kind of trying to watch the guys that are, you know, that I know aren't real, that are, I just haven't been watching a whole lot of kids videos. I don't want to say anything bad because I want us, I don't want us to, I don't like people bickering, but I just, I haven't watched a lot of, a lot of the bigger channels. I mean, I'm sorry. I feel like they've all kind of gotten the same in how they are presenting their content. I don't feel like they're really, you know, I mean, I can, the information is all there. It's all delivered in the same exact format. And it's just kind of, you know, I don't like watching, uh, you know, a rerun of the same show every week with just a different script. So I've started watching a lot of the smaller channels and a lot of the, you know, the new drone people and the new droners because they're doing a lot of new, innovative, creative, you know, I, and that's what I like. I don't, I'm always, making stuff. I, I love to continually make stuff. I might not put up videos all the time, but it, it, Bill and Ron both know me really well. So I'm always making graphics or I'm always making, you know, intros or something or just fiddling with something or I'm learning about, 
OBS or about Streamlabs or and and anybody is it welcome at any time to pick my brain about any of this and whatever I know if I can help you in any way then I'll be grateful to help you with it you know I kind of got a basic knowledge now building uh, virtual sets but I'm thinking that there's there's like I said there's a lot of those out there now that I'm seeing these kind of like sports center sets you know and so we may do something kind of like that somewhere down the road if we can get uh, I think be either Streamlabs. There's another one called Streamcast. They're all built off of the OBS platform. So, you know, you can even use OBS still. So <clears throat> it's all something that's really cool, something that I've been into. And that's kind of what I do because I'm kind of, you know, anybody that knows me really well and knows what I do for a living with my wife, I kind of stay at home a lot because our business is at home. So I do this to try to help out. And like I said, anybody that wants my help or can benefit from my help, if I can help you, please let me know. Okay, guys, y'all want to jump back in? Hey, um, um, and Eric, and I'm sorry, I saw a bunch of people jump in the chat. Oh, go, 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 go. Introduce them all, Bill. Introduce them all. Dan's in the chat. Eric, Hello, Dan. Eric the Red's in the chat. Hello, Eric. <laughs> So howdy, 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 howdy. Welcome. Yes, I'm Welcome. From West Virginia, so I might say howdy a few two times. Too many two times? Too many times. Nothing wrong with a couple good howdies. <laughs> I was born in Pennsylvania, and Pennsylvania connects with West Virginia, I believe. Not Virginia. Someplace. Not not West Virginia, Virginia. But that, you be, okay, I thought somewhere in the Pittsburgh area, like in the, the south western quarter of Pennsylvania yes. connected West Virginia. Yes, it does. To get it to, a, to a, any kind of geogra geography discussion. Let's get back to drones. I'm going to get another drink. I'll be right back. Okay. Well, Bill Thomas got himself, looks like a fine racing drone there, like a five-inch beast now. i tell you the truth. I can never fly anything like that, but I, I like the practice on these little tiny whip guys. This is called the Eastern M80. It's only like about thirty dollars on Banggood now, and you get three batteries with it. It's a bind and fly, so you need a you need your own TX. But this little guy will even do like acro, and um, it doesn't have OSD. But again, it does have acro. You get about three minutes of flight. Here you go, Bill. Here's what you need to get started: like a little a little tiny little training drone. This is at the M80 Ishin M80 does acro, bind and fly. Um, you know. It's great to, you know, learn. I think it's a brush motor, not a brushless. But it, it, I've had it outdoors just a little bit, but it's a, it's a good trainer to get it, to get get you to a bigger drone, like your five-inch beast that you got coming, which um, Brian I, 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 could, I, I couldn't handle that thing you're getting, Bill. So uh, well, I, you're, I, you're I, a better I, man than I am. I told him earlier, I said, because you said, <laughs> well, we need some flight videos. I said, some crash videos. <laughs> <laughs> Because I got a feeling I'm going to crash a lot. Just cut, but, 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 I got a feeling I'm going to take those peak propellers off and put something else on because I want to save them for when I get to flying good. Yeah. The city. <laughs> well, here's one hint, Bill. Make sure you don't have it on Acra when you first start flying. I was telling him, I was talking when I was talking to Brian earlier. Okay. And I, I got on my, like I said, I'm going to have G Nemo Edwards is in Coast to Coast Drones. If you got any F, FPV questions, he loves to build everything from full size to micros. Brian Beardsley, the guy that's sending me that hot pink, the oh, it's a gorgeous <laughs> little. I mean, everybody's been explaining to me, set telling me that it's it's built sturdy and it's everything's, uh, you know, it's, you know. I'm just I'm, oh. <laughs> so, uh, and Joe Goodman and and Joe lives on like he's got his cabins like on the water. And it's kind of like, I'm not, I'm not thinking it's somewhere frozen. I'm thinking up north somewhere. And he loves to fly his race drone like up over the snow-capped trees and then out over the river. And it's some of the most gorgeous footage I've ever seen. And then, <laughs> and Brian likes to go out in the desert and he does a lot of like, he'll, they'll fly up the sides of like the canyon cliffs and then, you know, dive down them. And they're really gorgeous to watch. And then uh, <laughs> Nemo, who used to be, he used to spend, you know, he was a DJ back in the day. He, he you know, he's working full time now. He does some of the funniest, craziest. He made a video the other day that I posted in Coast to Coast Drones called Poop Whooping. And it was this, I said, when you got goggles in a drone, who needs reading material? 
<laughs> so that's going to be kind of a new area. If you have anything, questions about building, about FPV, please come to Coast to Coast Jones, join up and hit them up with your questions. I'm sure they'll help you out with the builds and anything like that. And that's what they're there for. So I'm just trying to help kind of broaden things around. Uh, make sure uh, we're going to do, I wanted to bring up a couple of things. We're going to do some kind of crazy, quirky little contest things. Like we'll do the drone news trivia next week. Remember, you got to have those code words to get in. And if you weren't here for the code words, I don't know what to say. Maybe re watch the replay and you'll have the code words. Come back next week. Give us the code words when we ask for them. We're going to be available for five minutes, and you will be entered into the Drone News Trivia Contest for the winner of the free drone. But like I said, we're only giving away the drone. We're not giving away shipping. Sorry. Um, the other thing is I've talked to my friends. We're going to try to do something. I came up with this thing called the Positive Drone Initiative. And as we've all heard recently and over the past few months, it seems like Every little thing that's going wrong in the air, they're blaming on a drone. So we got to we got to stick together. And I've brought this up before. YouTube, I mean, and that, whatever. If they want to scream at me, I don't really care. But because I care about the community. But YouTube manufacturers, vendors, they all keep us fighting against each other. We're all bickering against each other, thinking, "Oh, you've got you're on my day, or you're on my day, or you're in my time, or you took my no." We should all be together and they should be begging to come to us. Think of the money we're saving them producing these videos. Think of the money that we're saving them when we're sharing all these links and all these groups. And yet we're doing it night and day, stabbing each one of our friends in the back to help them out. And they're not giving us anything but a $25 or $30 drone or a what, $15 or $20 battery. <laughs> This is ridiculous. All this. We need to get out there. We need to start telling people that drones are good. They're positive. And that we need to start teaching people that they're beneficial and good. And that people who use them the right way, that th that's why they should stay here. And they shouldn't, big business shouldn't take over the skies to deliver pizzas and packages. That we should be able to still stay up there and have our fun and, and, and be able to take pictures and photos and fly our drones fast right down onto the water and all that stuff. So we got to stick together as a community and we got to start letting the manufacturers and the vendors and everybody know that we're not their patsies. We're not their little puppets that we're going to start bonding together and the quality work that they want, they're going to have to ask for it and they're going to have to deliver on it to get it. And with that being said, we all want to start something that, that give back to the, to the community. So we're going to start something called the drone table. And basically what that means is when you got, we, we it might be that we have so many people in the chat or, or somebody might have the, the correct subject for that day or something. And that's all we're going to talk about. Whatever that you all, the, the, the drone table is going to set the subject. And that's all we're going to talk about for the entire time. That, and, you know, whether it be positive, whether it be negative, I don't care if we get likes. I don't care if we get dislikes. It doesn't matter. The whole point is, is us as a community bonding together and, and getting stuff worked out. We don't need to, like I said, we don't, we don't need to fight amongst each other. We need to unite together as a community and make these, the, the commercial end of it come to us and start treating us fairly. We don't need to start slapping each other. We don't want to stick kicking each other. We got to stick together. And that's what the drone table is about, whether it be um, the updates to 107 or it, it could even be unfair prices like where I'm talking about DJI or... Um, it doesn't, it doesn't, it can be anything that we think is a serious matter that needs more talk about. And, and the whole point is, is when the drone table gets triggered, then that's when we decide what the subject is. So like say, okay, we have 20 people in the room. We're going to have a drone table. Okay. And then for five minutes, we'll go back and forth on what the subject's going to be. Okay. And then once we set the subject, even new people that come in, even people in the chat will say, okay, here's what we're going to talk about. It could be, like, we could be, we could be even talking about like 
a bad uh, toy drone. Like uh, remember when Donnie Hampton had that bad SEMA GPS and he did all that. We could actually, you know, talk about that or uh, something with unique or something with any, any of the drone manufacturers. I'm going to say it's going to be specifically to one bunch or one group, but it's got to be something that's important that matters to the drone community. And that's why we would have a drone table. It's just kind of like a, a gathering of the, the minds, whether that be, you know, somebody in the video field, somebody in the production field, or even so, even some, a vendor or, or something like a manufacturer is more than welcome as long as they look as at, as at the, the, the drone pilots themselves and the creators as an equal rather than a toy. That's what, that's the whole thing that I, that I really want to get to. We, we're, we're too good of friends, man. The drone community itself jumps a lot of barriers that outside of the drone community, uh, we see a lot of struggles with because in the drone community, we've all learned that we don't talk about politics, you know, or something that's a bad, you know, we just talk about drones and no matter what, we're always here for each other. And that's something that we got to start sharing with everybody because we, we got to get back together. And I'm so afraid with this new initiative going on that, the big business is trying to push us out of the sky so that Amazon can have their drone deliveries and Pizza Hut can have their pizza deliveries and we won't ever get to fly our drones and see our gorgeous sunsets again. And that's what I'm terrified of. So anybody got anything else? Um, Bill, um, I, the, the, the positive drone initiative, uh, I think that, that needs a t-shirt or a bumper sticker or whatever. That's a, uh, that's a good one. You better do it before somebody else does it or whatever. We better do it before somebody else does. We need t-shirts, bumper stickers, coffee mugs or whatever. Actually, um, <laughs> yeah, a, a well-designed logo from the, from the master Bill Thomas, but no, everything, everything Bill Thomas just said, I second it or whatever. I'm in complete agreement um, with, with everything you've just said here. So that's my stance. Well, I'll give that a, a, a hearty third because, you know, United, you know, th there's that old saying, united we stand, divided we fall. And if we get, get together as one drone community and say, you know what, number one, um, we, I always look for, and it's great, when I see a positive drone story, like, um, you know, uh, there was one I saw recently, I think it was in Australia, where um, they had even, it was a Mavic Pro dropped a life preserver to somebody out in the surf that needed one. You know, I, I really accentuate stuff like that. We need to, we need to blast the daylights out of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and, and let people know about that. I think I saw a stat, I think DJI published it. I think there was like, maybe it was 60 or so people in 2018 were saved by drones. Uh, I mean, seriously, one life, one life is always precious 60. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, um, you probably saw that one about, I think it was out on a mountain where um, through the use of a drone, um, it was in the snow and they rescued somebody. They found right. him. Bill, let me help you in that story. It was like, uh, it was like with the highest like mountain peak in the world and somebody took a drone up there. It was the highest drone flight ever. But when, when that guy was doing it, they got it reported that a height that a, a, a climber was lost nearby. So the guy had the drone there anyways, and he found the hiker stranded on the side of a mountain, holding himself with one hand. And they said that that, that climber would never would have been found and would have died there if it wouldn't have been for that drone. I think it was a Mavic. I think it was just a Mavic pro at that point. Yeah, I saw, but, I saw but, that, but that, 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 that was, was a great story. That, you know, that's incredible. And, and, you know, this, you know, um, you know, w w we need to just come together because, and, and I think the other thing too, um, I, I think there was a lot to go on with, um, you know, the, um, I forget the name of the association um, for the radio planes or radio control planes, um, AHA, I think it is, I'm not real sure, but um, you know, they were they were kind of like dead set against all, all these rules and everything because it was going to limit them and you know they're they're really kind of separate. I used to I I didn't renew my membership with them because I didn't really see any value as far as far as that's concerned. I know they have some insurance and everything, but but I think Bill could not be more more correct. You know we need we need to promote the positives out there. You know especially you know these enterprise level drones. 
I mean, they're designed, they have one design, okay? They're one capability, all right? Um, you know, a lot of people want to use these for maybe roofing inspections or whatnot, but you know what? They're going to save lives and they're going to be accessible. I mean, $2,600 to you and me, you know, that's probably a good chunk of change, but to a small fire department, they can afford that. Uh, you know, a small, um, you know, small town police force, they can afford that, you know, versus like a $35,000 matrice who they probably can't afford. They can do that and, and it can make a difference. And like I said, if it saves one life, it's positive news and, and it's worth it. I mean, the 60 people's a lot, 60 lives were saved last year from this. So uh, I'm a hundred percent behind this bill and I'm ready to buy the t-shirt. Just put the link up and I'm buying it. Oh, the link's already. I already put the link in chat. Like, <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. I did. Uh, uh, back to what Bill's thing about the uh, you know Amazon and whatever UPS taking over the all the uh, airways with their delivery drones and so on. Um, I, I think eventually a, a company like DJI they'll build the technology in their drones where they'll know all the other drones in the area and they'll avoid like hitting each other. Um, I see that coming down the road, maybe you said five, 10 years that, that these drones will all be kind of like driverless cars will be in 10 years. They'll all be aware of where the other ones are and they'll avoid hitting each other. Any thoughts on any technology look, like that? I was looking to see if I could lower the price on this t-shirt, but they won't let me. <laughs> uh, I, I did make another t-shirt if anybody's interested of the new logo. And I do have it discounted very heavily. Uh, it's only $20. It's the new logo that I just designed. Uh, it's up on the moniker in the group and here and on Twitter. But yes, please, anytime you would like to, you can check out the uh, Coast to Coast Drones t-shirt shop. And there's some prints on there. There's some other things on there. And please, you're more than welcome to share them. If I... It's like I've told everybody before when I started making them, I was my own best customer because I bought like 98.6% of total sales for my t-shirt. So, <laughs> so well, I, yeah, I'm going to purchase my t-shirt and maybe by like uh, uh, May, I'll be actually be able to wear a t-shirt rather than like a, a parka, you know, oh, uh, unless I, unless I make my move the, the, the sunny Florida, and then I'll be, I'll be rocking my uh, coast to coast uh, tank top. <laughs> well, there's there's some there's some there's actually some hoodies there's some uh actually i think i may have made some what are those things that the girls wear all the time now uh leggings with the oh. new logo on it uh, do, you, do you have the leggings in uh uh, uh, uh x, 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 x for a big guy like me yeah, yeah. <laughs> the super stretch right right <laughs> So yeah, I got it. yeah. Thank you, Ron. I'll make a version just for the male, and on the cheeks on the back side, it'll have a TX so that they can, you can play with. Hey, make, hey, make, hey, hey, make hey, it, make it, make it a smart controller. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh. and, 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 I, and I want my ten percent off the the smart controllers on the on the buttocks. Ay, ay, ay. Oh yeah, did, did y'all see? I got a new chair. Oh I, yeah. I the other guys, my my wife was we we decided to be because our chairs were falling apart and and her chair she got a finally got a really nice chair for herself. So but her that, that's her, that's a special build the drone review chair that's also available on the website. That's right. <laughs> he'll, he'll sign it. He'll he'll, 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 pers he'll personally sit it and sign it for you. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be part of the build drone build the drone reviewer swag. That's right. But, well, but shipping's know, not shipping's I gotta, not free. I gotta, I gotta share this with you guys. Um, I sent um Kelly from Ready Set Drone. I sent him a coffee mug. He said that's his favorite coffee mug. Every morning he drinks coffee out of it. He says, "Bill, he says I can't have my coffee unless it's in that mug." I just absolutely love hearing that. Well, that's it. Uh, that's, that's really cool. Tell, yeah. tell him it's got. Uh, tell him it's got to appear in a video. Like he's got to be holding it while he's flying or something. Well, he's he. he and, in return, he is uh, he is sending me a ready set drone T-shirt, so I'm I'm looking forward to that and probably, yeah, and probably a book too. Yeah. You're getting a book and a T-shirt. Yep, getting a book and a T-shirt. He's yeah. sending me a book too. Because so. I remember yeah. 
taking good care of me. Yeah, I yeah yeah. I'm not I'm not complaining at yeah, all. Everybody everybody in that chain was very very cordial and cool and yes. So yeah. like I said, we and everybody knows that we got to stick together. Absolutely. You know, this this we got to stop stepping on each other to try to get ahead, and instead start going. Uh uh. If you want me, you got to take him. If you want me, you got to take him. If you want me, you got to take him. You know, and then, then they'll finally start going, uh, 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 okay, I guess we'll take all of you. That's right. You're going to take all of us. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let me just say something. If you're, you know, if you're a creator of uh, content for YouTube, drones or whatever, uh, rather than chase views, what's, what's, why don't you chase quality instead in yeah. your content? Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Because one, of, because one will lead to the other. Once you produce, once you're producing high quality content, the views will come without chasing them. Well, you know, one of the things, and and I follow Sean Cannell is is one of, the, the, I learned a lot from him as far as YouTube and how to do videos, and I mean everything from technical aspects to uh, thumbnails and everything. And what he has, he has some great quotes every day. And he said, you know, one of the things he said, when you focus on content, your eyes are ahead and you're not looking in the rearview mirror and you're not looking at anybody else. You have blinders on. When you focus on content, everything else will follow. Excellent words. Yeah, I, I agree 100 percent. What? Look at this. It's now rain after 10 inches of snow and being in the single digits. So you got like, you don't have snow out front. You got big ice cubes. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, le let me ask the chat room a question. Who in the chat room has the coldest weather right now? Who, oh, who's sitting in the coldest yeah. the climate right now in the chat room? Yeah, temperatures, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I'm looking at 50 degrees here, so I'm not even close anymore. We've Uncle warmed up Buck, around here. Yeah, Uncle Buck said it's he's at 38 um, on Friday night, heat wave. And he's in Northeast PA. Holy cat! Oh, okay. I thought Kenny was saying minus forty. He is saying minus forty. Hey, wow. Okay. Oh, uh, what? Well, is it really that warm, Curtis? Evidently, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we. Curtis is only like about maybe forty. Well, an hour and a half south of me. So. But Jesus, my oh, forty. Just got a twenty-one in Missouri. But he's up in Canada, so that's possible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, two hours. Okay. Okay, let me ask the opposite question in the chat room. Who's sitting in the warmest climate right now in the chat room? And, uh, <laughs> we're right in the middle of somewhere. Somebody's got a 35 in PA. Uh, Mike's warmer so far. Oh, Mike's 53. That's good. 46. Mike did Mike, hey Mike, did you did you fly outside today? <laughs> hey, li listen to this story, guys. Mike the Birdman Cruise in there. He takes like little drones like SEMA X5s, and he he makes them um he he gets a board in them. He buys these boards for 10 or 20 dollars. He turns them into acro flyers. And, and and then and then he binds it to like a jumper TX. And he's flying like a an off the shelf like SEMA clone, acro with with these mods. It's incredible what he does. Oh wow! That Anybody is. that hasn't checked the Birdman 360s YouTube channel out, if you're into mods and and acro and FPV flying, Mike does it in a way nobody else does it. Like you know, basically modifying these these little toy drones into acro flyers. It's something well, to see. Does it? Uh, Brian Newsom does that a lot with the little whoops. He'll convert right. boys into, into full-blown acro flyers. Right. Well, Mike even puts the whoop boards in bigger drones, like the CMX-5 and those little things, and somehow he gets them working. I mean, I can't explain it. I've watched some of his videos, and I kind of understand what he's doing, but I don't understand at all. Well, I, I guess as long as you depend upon what kind of ESCs you got running through there and what kind of flight controller you put in it, it's not really going to be. Right. I mean, right. uh but really, wouldn't you? Does he? Okay, I haven't watched him, so I'm not going to know. Is he changing yeah. out the motors too? It would think to me that those, that those brush motors would just get torqued out too fast. Well, you, I don't think I don't think he does, you know, because um, he's using a he's using a like the board, you know, the uh, flight controller from a a, a a tiny whoop in in a bigger drone. So I'm 
I don't know if that has anything to do with it not burning the motors out. And the motors are so cheap, even if it would burn the motors out after a few flights, when you could buy you could buy motors for a couple of dollars. He says they're a little wobbly, but 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 they true acro. Okay, so you're you're using the the brushed motors off the the X five. He he even put them in X five clones. Yeah, he's in there. He's he's yeah. He'll do put them in even not a real X five. He'll do it in a clone. You because you X five cheap, but clones even cheaper. Yeah, but an X five clone is still an X five. It's <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Reaper, yeah. Man. Right right. It's not really a clone. It's still right. And so that's right. what I was, well, I mean, I was under the. I was thinking the same thing too. It was like it then it finally dawned on me. It was like. No, they're just rebrands like they do with everybody else. It's like, because you can go, what's that? Uh, there's a web, uh, Promo Pure. You can actually go there, get a drone, and have them put your name and moniker on it, and you can sell it. Nice, nice. Well, pretty much the same thing yeah. with all the yeah. others. Well, some of the guys want to, they want to use like the, a jumper transmitter with a with an X5, and sometimes you need the real X5 and not like a clone. Okay, yeah, he's saying he's so actually he's using those motors. They just really ain't got a whole lot to go with them, but that would be kind of cool though. Go ahead and put like the two megapixel camera on it, kind of get that lazy flips and stuff. That would make for some cool video. He does. He he has some videos like that. Or you could do like the, uh, Mike, lick, the lick, lick, lick one of those videos here in the in the chat room if you can. Yeah. So go to go to your channel and, and, and lick one of those videos in here. And here, here's what Mike uses to, to, to fly these things. This is called a jumper transmitter. It's like a hobby grade transmitter. And you, you can use it to do bind and fly whoops. But also, it also has protocols in here for common drones like SEMAs and little Hopsons. So you could take this and, 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 you know, bind it with your toy drone. And what this does it, you know, it's, it's, it's a much better transmitter. It gives you better range and more performance than the stock transmitter that came with your cheap toy drone. Uh, I want one. You want to see me that? <laughs> see me that? <laughs> yeah, I mean these these are like a these are like a hundred dollars, but they're great. Like Bill, you could buy this and buy and fly your 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 super duper uh, five inch uh, uh, monster to this, or you could get a Tyrannus. But but this could you know. This is a little more versatile Tyrannus because you can bind more things to it. It's probably not as nice as Tyrannus, but it's more flexible. He's, he's sending the Spectrum with it. There you go. You, yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's it, man. Because I was like, I was like, dude, I can't. And then he was like, no. He's like, only thing I want from you. If I send it, is that you're gonna fly it? And I was like, "Oh, that's not a problem. <laughs> that's not a problem." And now we just have to find Bill a nice set of uh, uh, FPV goggles. Like a lot of people like the Vipers. I'm not gonna need. I'm not gonna need FPV goggles for a while. I mean, regardless of what anybody says, you know, I'm gonna probably just get used to the drone itself in stabilized flight in the backyard for a while right right but you know line of safe flying is hard with these races because it's hard to figure out orientation because you don't have like all the lights and stuff like that that you do when you toy drone so again or figuring orientation is very tough for the races that's why most people fly them with the goggles well no i, I like i said i'm only going to fly like probably yeah 50 right foot, 50 foot runs in the backyard just but, very, but you were you you realize that 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 five inch drone you said if you're putting a three or four s battery it'll go fifty feet like in five seconds. Oh, no, I, but yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to say that, 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 that thing's gonna be a screamer. It's gonna it's gonna make your it's gonna make your DJI drones look like they're um you know uh, the old man's uh, car or whatever. Oh yeah yeah I know I know I don't have anything that's gonna come close to it. I'm not used to that kind of speed. I, I don't doubt that. Like the fastest thing I would have would be. Well, no, I guess it would be the either the, the Phantom or the Mavic. So probably the Mavic like, Air. The, like, mm -hmm. Yeah, like like Bill H. You're the but the yeah the Mavic Air or the Mavic Two goes what like forty five miles per hour top speed. Yeah, yeah. I, I bet you th this five inch drone he's being made for it. My my friend Tommy Pole, his pro. I've been flying with him before. He he would he would fly right by Mavic like it wasn't moving. And you oh, how fast yeah. the Mavic is, you know that you know. But again, he's flying this with the goggles on, so he could see much more precise than we are flying line of sight looking at the monitor. Yeah. 
Makes sense. Well, all right. Well, I guess we're kind of running out of steam here, unless anybody has anything else they want to bring up tonight. Oh, it wasn't that. Now we weren't running that. It's, it's like because everybody's been talking about different things. Because John was talking about, yeah, uh, the line of sight's really tough. He said, nice explaining fat shark. V2s look very good. $69. There you go. Uh, but see, that, the thanks for the recommendation, John. I, I'm looking for a better pair of um, FPV goggles myself. Of course, uh, I have to have something that either accommodates glasses or I can adjust, I can move it in or out or whatever. Then I can get away without wearing glasses. So I have to be real picky on my goggles. I know John wears glasses, so he may have the same issues too, as far as having a particular set of goggles. Or, goggles. Mike, just put up a link. Please check out the link because, like, it's the, like Ron was talking about a few minutes ago, he does the mods with the, the toy drones and stuff so that they'll fly acro and everything. Which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. So, like like Ron was saying, everybody's kind of winding down a little bit. So, what we will do, I would like to invite you all back next week. But before I finish and close out, I will pass back to my co hosts so that they can close out and maybe give you a heads up on what they're doing on their own channels next week and what we might be doing next week. On And I'll give you all an idea what we're going to do next week here. So I will pass it to Bill H. Thank you. All right, Mr. Mr. Bill. Thank you very much. Um, as I mentioned, got um, I have a video coming out tonight on the happy anniversary Mavic Air. So we're going to be um, watching that. Um, be sure to come out for that later. Um, got a great video coming out on. It's going to be a comparison between the Mavic 2 Pro's camera and the camera that is on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual, the regular camera. So uh, be on the lookout for that as well. Unfortunately, you know, my time came to a close with that a little suddenly. I wasn't real pleased about that. But um, also you guys might want to take a look at, and I got a great video from a good friend of mine over in the UK. He's coming to Florida in May, and I'm looking forward to get together with him, Ian Jones, um, who did – he filmed what's real interesting, and I think you guys might find this interesting, is he filmed that entire video with his Osmo Pocket, everything, 100%. And I just absolutely love that. He sent me everything. He said, go ahead and put it together. And he was great. He did an opening. This is Bill the Joan of your, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. So, um, but um, look, looking forward to that. Um, and got some, uh, got some, uh, uh, I'll call, I'll call maybe looking into my crystal ball videos coming up. So, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to see what, what's, what's going to be in the crystal ball as far as drones are concerned, especially for DJI. Um, and I'm looking for, looking forward to, um, doing this every week now. This will, this will, this will be great. Tuesdays, Tuesday night, I have Rotor Talk Live and, um, had a great show last night and love seeing Bill was on there. Um, loved having him on last night. Um, it went real well. Um, so I'm going to have Sunday afternoon Rotor Talk Live. It's going to be starting first Sunday in February. So be on the lookout for that. And with all that, I'm going to turn it over to um, um, Ron in very frozen, very cold New Jersey. Uh, uh, thank you, Bill. Uh, I, I, it's warming up. It's 50 now. So, uh, it, it, But um, I'm looking forward to all that good stuff you have in your channel. That sounds like it's something exciting content you have coming up for us. I'm sure it's going to be your usual high quality content. So looks at looking forward to it. Um, I got a couple of things coming up. I, uh, the guys mentioned a little bit about this ice video I shot just the other day. I was down at the, at the shore and uh, it was so cold that the ice was even freezing up on the back bays and the bays are partially salt water. I, I have made a, a Facebook only version of the video, but about, I'm about to drop the YouTube version, maybe even tonight or tomorrow morning. So be on the lookout for the, um, the Phantom four flying over the frozen, uh, bays of uh, New Jersey. Um, so I have that coming up and, and I plan on doing a video, another Xeno video come up for my Xeno fans. They, they've solved the soft focus issue in the Xeno video, but they still haven't solved the photo issue. When you take a photo with the Xeno, you basically get a screen grab and not even a good screen grab. So the photos are still pretty useless. So I'm working with Hupson behind the scenes right now to, um, to get that issue resolved with the, with the, uh, the photos. 
um, getting better out of the Xeno. So, and, and I plan on some, doing some more content with the, um, the GoPro Hero 4. Um, I incorporated a little bit in the latest video, but I plan on doing some more solo videos of that. And um, I'm even going to have a little video come up discussion on some pocket options. But um, anyhow, that's enough for right now. Um, I want to thank uh, Bill Thomas again for having us on the show and, and doing such a great show and, and doing a great giveaway you know, for our audience and the community. And um, again, just thrilled to be here with these guys. It, it's uh, I look forward to it. We're doing it weekly now for a little while. So again, it's, uh, so I just, it's a thing I look forward to week after week. So on that note, I'm going to throw it back to Bill Thomas and he's going to wrap us up tonight and take us home. All right. And I thank you very much, gentlemen. And as always, it's a pleasure to be here with you as now each and every week, starting next week and next week, the episode will be season two, episode nine drone news trivia. And maybe even a drone table, depending upon if particular parameters are met. I'll have to discuss with the guys what those might be. And as always, we are very grateful to see you here and have you here with us. Hopefully you'll come back and start seeing us every week. Please pay no attention to the ringing phone in the background. It's just part of my life. And my wife should get it. Yes. All right. There we go. <laughs> so with that being said, I talked to the guys and they said this was cool. So this is going to be our closing from now on. Live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. I can't do it right. I can't do that. Don't even ask me. <laughs> Good night, folks.